If you are struggling with French beaded flowers, it just could be that the way that the technique was taught to you may not be right for you. All that and more coming up. All these years, I've always taught one way, the way that I do things. And it wasn't until I started teaching in person more that I realized I need to teach differently depending on the student. My way may work for some, but may not be intuitive for others. So I began to research other ways to explain to my students so that they can connect the dots better. My name is Fen Lee, bead instructor here at the Beach Floor Studio. The mission of this channel is to help you shorten your learning curve while learning how to make French beaded flowers. If you would like to learn more, consider subscribing. In today's video, I will show you two ways of making continuous loops and continuous wraparound loops. I'll put timestamps in the video so that you can skip to the parts you want to watch. Now let's get to it. The technique that we'll be learning today is the continuous loop. And I already have some size 11 green seed beads on a spool of 24 gauge green copper core wire. So let's unwind that. I'm just gonna move the beads down here. And the pattern calls for um, 10 bead continuous loops. Um, to start out with, let's leave a three inch tail and we're just gonna eyeball that. Just mark the spot right here. And um, because we are making 10 bead loops, let's count 10 beads over here. And I like to count by fives, five, 10. So there's our 10 beads. And the way that I make my continuous loops is um, I like to cross the wires here underneath the beads. Like this. And um, a thing I, that I like to do is to start out for the first loop is to put the cross over my forefinger. So that way it steadies your loop so you don't get a lot of um, bare wire space here. So just nice and steady. And then twist twice. And there you have your loop. And then uh, for the second loop, you're going to need just a little bit of space, maybe about Oh, not too much, maybe about two millimeters. So you just, just hold on to that spot with your thumb or just put your thumb there and that should be plenty of space. Just 10 beads here. Cross the loops. I'm gonna show you this one more time. I do kind of like a flipping motion my thumb here. I put my finger um, underneath the beads. Just flip it. And then twist. Okay, I'm going to show you one more time. Let's do 10 beads here. Hold on. This spot with your thumb, hold on to this spot with your thumb, take your forefinger and do a flip, and you get a cross. Now um, I'm going to show you another way to do the loop. I'm just going to finish this loop here first. And the pattern calls for five um, 10 bead continuous loops. Okay. And I'm going to twist the two ending tail wires together. Shape it a little bit. And then cut another tail off of the spool.
All right, now I'm going to show you another way to uh, make the continuous loops. And that is the folding method. So start out again with your um, wire, uh, three inch tail. And I'm going to count the 10 beads here. And this is the way that um, most people do it. They like to fold the loop and then twist it. And then for the second one, leave some space in between. Um, that looks like about one eighth of an inch. Fold it again. My suggestion to you is to use whatever method um, works best for you. Some people prefer the folding method of making the loops, and some people like to um, do it the way that I prefer, which is kind of flipping the um, the wires to make a cross. But either way, you get the same result. And just like the continuous loop technique, we'll be needing a three inch tail. So we're just gonna eyeball that again. Um, we'll be starting out with a 12 bead loop. So let's start out counting 12 beads here. And I like to pinch this loop here a little bit. I just don't like that uh, big of a loop um, for my um, blossom petals. So we have the working wire here and the tail wire here. And um, I am right-handed, so I like to wrap from left to right. Um, some people like to wrap from right to left, and that is completely up to you. So if you want to wrap from um, right to left, you can just leave the wire right here on the side and just wrap around this way. But because I like to wrap from left to right, I'm just going to move the working wire to the left-hand side. So I'm just going to just un do one half of a twist on this loop here, and that is completely fine. And so now the working wire is on the left hand side. So we're gonna feed the beads on and then wrap it around this initial loop. And put this over your finger as you wrap around just so that you get just the right amount of um, beads on here. So you're not leaving a lot of bare wire space. Hold on to each spot bit by bit as you are wrapping around. So this way it ensures that you have just the right amount of beads around your loop. Okay. So now we're always going to wrap um, facing up. You don't want to wrap like down here because it, it's, it's just harder to wrap this way. So I like to wrap facing up. 
just so that I'm always wrapping at the same spot. Okay. So I'm just going to remove any excess beads right, um, right next to the tail wire here and hold on to your um, petal firmly. Put this over your finger like this, just so that you have just a little bit of space right here where you can see where you're wrapping. But other than that, hold on to the spot. You just want just enough space that you can see where you are wrapping. So that way it ensures that it is you have the right amount of beads and you are wrapping firmly. Okay, so I'm gonna remove this bead here. Go behind the tail wire and bring it back to the front. And then back one more time so that the working wire is on the right hand side when you flip it back over. So now you have one double continuous wrap around loop. One 12 bead double continuous wrap around loop because we have two loops over here. All right. And for the bud, it will be making three of these continuous um, double loops. And we're just going to leave a small amount of space here. Uh, we're looking at about one eighth of a one eighth inch of a space. Okay, so let's count another 12 beads over here. Hold on to the spot and hold on to this spot. So I'm just gonna make a loop. Pinch this here. And because, again, I like to wrap from left to right, I'm just going to move my working wire to the left hand side. And then again, put this over your finger as you are wrapping to ensure that you have just the right amount of beads, just bit by bit. Hold on to it bit by bit. And now we're going to wrap it in this in between um, wire right there. So take the um, working wire, go underneath the in between wire, back to the front, and then down one more time, flip it over, and you're back on the right hand side. And I'm just going to pull on this a little bit so that um, so that the base of the petals match. So I'm just going to hold on to it firmly and pull down. So now um, the base of the petals are right next to each other. So with this here, you just want to look it over and adjust a few times if it's not tight enough. Because you don't want to have too many beads. If you have too many beads, you're just going to have a gap like this here when you make your wrap. But if you like don't have enough, it'll be too tight. So you just want to write, have the right amount of beads. You see how I'm holding on to it firmly and just leaving this tiny bit of space where I can see where I'm wrapping because you're holding on to it very firmly. You can see the dents on my fingers. That's how firmly I'm holding on to it. All right, so now let's um, twist the ending two tail wires just a little bit at the base here. I'm going to cut another tail off the spool. Okay. 
Now, just for kicks and giggles, I'm going to try to do it from um, right to left. Let's see how that goes. All right, so for the pattern, we're going to need 12 beats here. And this is the way that I guess most um, people that are left-handed do it. You just do it this way. Or you don't even need to be left-handed as some people just prefer to wrap it from right to left. They don't need to be left-handed to do this. You don't need to be left-handed to do to choose this method. Uh -huh. not, not bad. So in French beading, there are many ways to do it, and you just need to figure out um, the most comfortable way for you and do that because it's pretty awkward for me when I do this. So as you are learning, yes, it's going to be awkward, um, but just keep practicing and you'll find your groove. Not bad. All right. Let me know if you like more videos like this, showing you different ways of getting the same result. If you have no experience with French beading, my book is a great place to start as it walks the absolute beginner through each process with a range of beginner to advanced techniques. You can find the book at all major book retailers online. And if you like an autographed copy made out to you, you can order it directly from me. Happy beating and I'll see you soon.